So let's look at where we would go from here. So we've looked at the birth, marriage and death certificates, and now we're going to move on to the census. Again, this should be familiar to many of you, I hope. You might have even filled in the census return. Um, more recently, um, I think from 1911, is that correct, Robin, that uh, people would fill in their own? That's right, yes. It, uh, the pattern changed and you it's rather nice. You actually get the handwriting and the signature of the person filling in the form, yes. So you didn't get um, the enumerator and then it being copied out again. So um, so that is, is nice. So here we are. There are the, the Burroughs family. Um, the census um, is a very rich source of information. Um, I've said beginning in 1841. That's not strictly true. I don't mean to be lying to you all. Um, they actually started in 1801, uh, but those... Um, were more head counts and didn't give the richness of detail. So I've said 1841, hoping this won't mislead you into thinking you can do more than uh, you can actually do. Yes, I, I think there was a promise, wasn't there, that they would they wouldn't make the information public, and they destroyed it. So they destroyed the early censuses, and it's only odd survivals. But um, thereafter, they thought, well, we will keep it, uh, but we'll close it for a hundred years, which is why. Well, as you say, they're closed for 100 years, which is why you, you can't see it until 100 years later, which is very frustrating sometimes. Yes, yeah, it, quite. But uh, it's amazing how, when you look at it, that people regarded that information as incredibly sensitive, isn't it? Given the um, things we put on social media now. Uh, <laughs> That's very true. Yes, well, yes. Victorian yeah. ancestors would probably be horrified. Um <laughs> But yes, so it, available and searchable online. Now, we also have, um, or at your local library or record office, um, you'll have uh, possibly film or microfiche of the census. And if your heart's sinking when we say things are available um, online and you uh, are not familiar with computers or not confident, uh, really see if somebody can help you. Um, nobody's born knowing how to use um a computer uh, my mum's 84 and she's now a whiz with um pretty much everything so she can do it you can you can all do it have have confidence there is no self-destruct button on it so the worst you can do is just not find what you want or make a bit of a hash of it but it's not a disaster um but you will find that it's much easier to search online than try and do it um do it as uh, you would on um, a, a microfilm. It just takes hours and it's really difficult. So after that pep talk, everyone, um, Al's childhood, uh, let's look at this. So this is the 1871 census um, where Al's parents are shown with um, their two children, or two children so far, um, Martha and William. So I can see you can't read that. So yeah. For your delight and edification, I've done a little table of what it says. So you can see that um, Frederick Burroughs is there and uh, the head of the household was usually the uh, man. So um, we, we know that's not true, don't we, Robin? Uh, unfortunately, nowadays, uh, it's, 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 no, it's no longer true, I think. Perhaps it was more true in those days. Can we settle on it was more true? Well, we can't consult Emma on what she thought about that. Um, but the relationships on the census are um, the relationship to the head of the household. So if the house, um, the head of the house was a woman, perhaps a widow or a single lady, um, she will be, be the head of the household. Um, so you've got Martha, who's um, aged five there, and uh, William, who's um, a year and 10 months. So the 1881 census, remember um, Alfred's born in 1876, and here he is um, on the uh, next census uh, 10 years later. So here... Ooh, here don't, don't miss out. If you go back, can you go back? Is that possible? Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, sometimes it's always worth looking on the census, and if you look underneath the Burroughs household at the next door neighbour, you'll see they've got a widower next door, a chap called Thomas Ward, and he's described as a mendicant, and he was born on the sea. So it's always worth looking at the census to see what strange people were living about uh, in that area. There you are, so a mendicant who was born on the sea. Who'd have dreamt that? Makes you wonder whether Alf Burroughs grew up with stories from that chap, doesn't it? No, oh, yes, yeah. No, that's us. Sorry to interrupt, but that's always, you know, it always intrigued me that. Yes. No, no, um, you're, you're quite right, I'm sure. Um, also, you might be wondering about the little lines that are crossing it. Uh, this was used for counting, and they can be really annoying. Um, that uh, Victorian clerks uh, had absolutely no consideration for people trying to read it a hundred years later. <laughs> so we've we've seen people uh, seen censuses. Sorry, that are a lot worse than this. So yeah. here we are. There is uh, there's the Burroughs household again. So pleasingly, the ages all tally. They don't always. You can find people age less than ten years, um, or more than ten years between censuses. Um, but uh, not not in this case. So don't be too put off by uh, sort of inexact ages, unless it's wildly different. You probably have got the right person. Um, so Martha, uh, fifteen, she's now working in an office, and William and Alf, um, two little boys, they're both at schools. So that's what scholar means. Um, but we can see that uh, tragedy has struck the family, where Fred um, is now sadly a widower. So no, no Emma. Yes, yes. Any more? So you'll want to find out what happened to her, won't you? Um, so we need to look on the General Register Office indexes. Um, if you remember, we mentioned the births, marriages and deaths. Um, this is what they look like. Some of them are handwritten, um, which is why we always urge you to uh, search online. Um, and there is Emma, uh, who died aged 36. So we've got here her um, death certificate. In um, So we can find that she died in January 1881. Um, it says she's the wife of uh, Frederick Burroughs. And we can also see that she died in uh, childbirth, uh, which, of course, was very, very common at the time so very sad for the for the whole family and presumably the child died too uh, as he yeah. doesn't, or she doesn't appear on the the census no um if the baby lived even for a short time in theory there should be a birth and a death recorded um with the age obviously given as zero so you could look for that um but yes it looks like that the child um just didn't uh, uh, it's very sad, very sad. And the breakup of a, of a happy family, I suspect, there. Yes, yeah, yes. So here, here we go. Um, so this is, look and admire this. Um, it's good as you research to just keep uh, track of what you found out. Otherwise, you can have a plethora of um, notes, certificates, photocopies, information, um, and then think, oh, who was William again? Um, which Frederick is that? Um, and, and that sort of thing. So just try and sort of keep it. It's horribly easy. You won't know until you start um, how easy it is to get all the dates muddled up and um, all the people muddled up and then find that oh, you're yes. in the wrong. I, I couldn't wrong. agree more, Jenny. I, I think careful note taking. And then when you wish to refer back, you can find it. And when you wish to tell somebody else, you can find it. And when, wish you, when you wish to consult someone and you're you're standing in front of them saying, oh, yes, I'm looking for Alfred Burroughs, who was born in, ah, oh, let me see, you can find it. It's far more efficient. And you will, th oh, if you buy a proper notebook and a proper pencil or something to record it, um, whatever method you choose, computer, otherwise you keep decent notes, very important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a good tip for some of it is you can write them on index cards, um, yeah. which mum did when she was tracing our family history, and then you can move them around. But um, 
make sure you don't lose the cards. Um, and uh, of course, as we say, there are WYSI computer programs. So I put ALF there in white so you can see where we started. I see another figure has appeared at the left, Mary Jane Webster. Who's Mary Jane Webster? Ah, yes. Who's she? Um, well, Emma died, didn't she? Yeah. So this is, what's, this is a wicked stepmother figure, is it? Or a stepmother anyway? Yes, I think we've we've strayed into Grimm's fairy tales. Sorry, here I live most of the time. It's, it's a fantasy world of my own. But yes, yeah, yeah. So, yes. so, so the, the family. So Frederick has married a, a a stepmother for his children, presumably. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All, all married um, after the death of uh, of Emma. <laughs> So um, let's have a look at the 1939 register. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, the census wasn't taken in 1941 because of the war, uh, but we do have a document called the 1939 register. And this was compiled for wartime administration purposes, such as rationing. Um, and it helped the government to understand the skills people had. And it was updated after, after the war as well and uh, is available online. So that's a page from it. Um, if we look at Annie Burroughs, you'll remember she's um, Alfred's wife. Oh, yes. and there she is. Um, the yellow bit there that's very annoying um, it's a bit of cello tape or other tapes are available, um, but adhesive tape that's been stuck on the page and then pulled off again. Um, this might be familiar to you. You might have even done it. Uh, if you are doing it to stick torn pages together, um, don't do that. Stop immediately um, because it creates this and there's no way known to science um, to uh, remove it. It's horrible. Yes, it yeah. is. It's, it doesn't look good, but it also, it's very easy to remove the information underneath with the sellotape, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, quite. So uh, stop it immediately. That's another thing we will tell you. Mm. Do you think we're bossing people about? Yeah? I'm afraid we are. We are bossy people. That's the trouble. I have to stop that. Stop that. We Jen. are. Yeah, stop that. Oh, I'm being bossy again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so here's Annie, uh, who's now, uh, by now, uh, quite an elderly lady, um, and you've got her date of birth, and she seems to be living with a relative, Winifred Burroughs. Um, so I, I was just going to say, what it, what is this record is officially closed? What have we got there? What's that all about? Yeah, I'm glad you've asked me that. Um, the record officially closed are people in the same household who um, may still be alive and can't yet be viewed. Right, right. So this is your good old data protection law that you may have heard of. Um, so it's not certainly not exact. I've uh, been with the lady who found herself on the 1939 register, even though she was really manifestly alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh. and, and therefore, um, she, yeah, she was surprised to find out that um, she'd been recorded as dead. Um, mm. So there are people who um, are alive whose information you can view and uh, people whose records are still closed. You can unlock closed information you need to contact. Um, there's a, a way of contacting it now if you have a look at the website um, to unlock um, a closed record. So there's Annie and it says um, it gives the occupations as well. So there she is doing unpaid domestic duties. We all know about that, don't we, girls? 